Right, good morning, welcome back. Now, Triumph Legend, back on the bench. Let's bring you up to speed with where we were last. I took the rusty old exhaust header pipes off, took the rusty old exhaust header studs out, got all that long day, as you remember, and then restored all the cruddy, rusted front of the engine. All that corrosion, now nice and shiny. Everything's ready to go. The engine's only 15,000 genuine documented miles, so it just needs a service at the end of the project. That's ready to go. So ready to install the new exhaust but I haven't got one. So there are two options, I can buy one or make one. Buying one is a lot of money, it'll be something like a mass moto tracker system and that's about a thousand pounds or more and I don't have that kind of money and I'm not likely to anytime soon. So the next thing is to make one. Now, making one, I thought, get some pre-made exhaust tubing, the, the mandrel bent stainless tubing. You can buy it randomly, you chop it up like a jigsaw puzzle and you make your exhaust like a big jigsaw, then you weld it all together. Well, that's easy enough for those who can TIG weld to a high standard. Well, I can't TIG weld at all. I don't even have a machine. And if I bought one tomorrow, I'd only be, at the very best, a beginner. And it wouldn't look nice. I can MIG weld though. So that's what today's about. That's what this video is. Before I go buying all those bends and I go that way, I'm gonna see if I can take some scrap stainless tubing, load some stainless wire into the machine, cut it up and weld it up and see if the welds come out sound and solid and okay. And if I grind them back, they stay that way and they're, they're gas tight. And if that is the case, then I can make my own exhaust from scratch. But we won't know until I've tested my skills at welding up the tubing, because that's fundamentally the center of the job. So let's get stuck into that first, load up the machine with some stainless and see how we get on. Right, there we are, that's everything set up, the machine set up. The purpose of this exercise was simply to test my personal welding skills and to see if I can make a joint that's nice enough to pass muster. I either can or I can't, it'll either work or it won't, it might be a case of practice, so that is the purpose of today. To practice, to see if it'll work, see if I can just get a little bit better before I attack the bike in earnest and waste materials on something that, really and honestly, I'll probably have to hand over to someone else. But I hope not. So let's get practicing and see how it goes.
just discovered a fourth option. Rather than chuck these pipes away, I was thinking that these standard pipes which came off, being as they were so shiny, with so much rust on, were just chrome that had just decayed and gone horrible. But having a grope round with a magnet, they're not chrome, they are stainless pipes. They're just horribly, horribly dirty. And a couple of seconds there with a wire mop, and they do kind of come up. They probably need a lot more work to come up shiny, but look, there's another option. I had a three into two system, and it's now it seems apparently stainless steel and not chromed mild steel rusted. So these will clean up. Now that doesn't mean I'll use them, but what it does give me the option is three downpipes that curve properly under the bike. Then it might be, if I can't make a bespoke complete high level system, I can make a joiner, a three into one collector at the bottom, straight up to an exhaust silencer, job done. So this could be a lot easier job than it looked to be. Nice to have another option, if nothing else. Anyway, where was I? Get on with it. Right, there we are. First ever pass of welding stainless tubing with stainless wire. Lovely. Initially, a little bit too much power and just pop through it. So drop it down to minimum power on a very low wire speed and just tack it all the way around. It's not clever stacking tacks, but if it works and it gives you a reasonably nice looking weld that you can flat back, then it really doesn't matter. And also, if I'm gonna do these three downpipes under the bike, then the collector will be under the bike. And in that sense, not quite so exhibition as a high level, but look, no excuses. I enjoyed that. And I'm very impressed that it was actually that easy first time out, because welding thin tubing is always a challenge. And this stuff is about one and a half mil thick. So it's not that thin, but it went very well. Great, happy first effort. Let's get some more done.
Right, there we are. Eight attempts or eight practice runs, if you like. A ring weld all the way around the pipe and three of them have gone very well indeed. And it seems that they are the ones that you just stack the tacks over and over in the same place. Any attempt to seam weld it is unsuccessful because it overheats and blows through. Any attempt to stitch across the joint to give it extra strength, it doesn't work because it overheats and blows through. It's just a case of tacking it all the way around like a little stack of nickels all the way around. Looks quite nice actually, but obviously that seems to be the way it likes it the most. As far as the machine's concerned, I'm down on lowest power and second from lowest wire setting. Any attempt to adjust the wire setting here and here, it's all over the place. Too much and it's firing into it, and banging and dropping the arc. Too little and it's dropping the arc because it's not feeding the wire out quick enough. So. Number two on the setting is absolutely perfect. I'll make a note of those settings for when I come to do the job. So out of those three there, and the first one, I think that's actually quite a nice weld. I'll give you a close look in a second. I haven't cleaned these last three up either there, exactly how they come out of the gun. And I'm quite happy with them for my first attempt. So now we're gonna flap them back, clean them up, and see how they look when they've been ground off. Because that really is the test, to see if they grind back nicely and look the part. So let's do that next. Okay, there we are, a long old day, really enjoyed that and learned a great deal. I learned that I can tack weld that together very carefully as long as I take my time, get the torch angle right and do a really careful job of it. You can see how strong they are. You just grind them off and those pipes are properly fused. Just grind off the welds afterwards and the pipe is still rock hard strong. As you saw, a sustained attack from a two pound hammer, all it did was dent it all over the place. No splits, no cracks, didn't break them apart. Fantastic, very happy with that indeed. So now I know, then now today I've discovered that my header pipes were not rusty chrome at all. In fact, with the aid of a magnet, I proved that they're stainless steel and reasonably good quality. Whatever it is that's all over them, I don't know, but I can clean that off. Once that's all ground and polished off, I'm gonna see if I can make the pipes from them. The reason for that is that as much as I wanted a high level exhaust, it would look very cool, and I would really still love that. I think I should really consider that the guys at Tech Bike Parts, they make high level exhaust for Triumphs and they're very lovely, but they take months working with dyno companies to tune them so they're right. You can't just put an exhaust where you want and expect the bike to perform as factory. You can put an exhaust where you want, it'll get the gases away, but it might ride like a bag of old spanners and I don't want that. This is a lovely performer, so I want that to remain. So I think instead, I'm gonna step back from the high level a shame, maybe, but I'm gonna go underslung instead and put them in a three into one collector and a nice short stumpy little tracker pipe out one side, sounding glorious. It will still sound fantastic and it will still be my own work, which is the most important thing. So the collector's gonna be the hardest thing and whether I use these to get me out of the engine and down or whether I use all of the factory headers, I don't know. One way or the other, I have a task in front of me, but that's the challenge. Because as the old saying goes, without challenge, there's no achievement. So you take it easy, ride safe. And for my challenge, I'll see you next time.